Welcome back to the Filmmaker's Time Chamber. I'm your host, actor, writer, director, Alexander Aliong Jr. Thank you guys so much for coming back. This is episode number six. We shall be diving into Secret Invasion episode two. So as per usual, we're going to be diving right in. So spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen the episode, go to Disney Plus, watch the episode, come back here, and we shall discuss. All right. Now, episode one was a complete banger start to this series. Uh, once again, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but with the death of Maria Hill at the very end of the episode, sparking outrage in the comments from all the fans about how underutilized she's been throughout the MCU. So uh, rumor has it she may be coming back for the Marvels and future possible MCU projects. Uh, I believe that's best for her, the actress, uh, Colby Smulders, as well as the character Maria Hill, because they both deserve so much screen time. So diving right into episode two. Um, so the big reveals, uh, we had a huge, huge reveal on the train, the dialogue between Nick Fury and Talos, or Talos, however you want to pronounce it, um, announcing that one million scrolls are officially on Earth as of Thanos' snap. One million scrolls. So that just blows the entire gate open. So secret invasion has already happened. Earth has been invaded for years now. Uh, five years passed after the snap. That means five years at least. Now that was that was just an endgame. Who knows how much time has passed now? Of yeah, of Nick Fury being gone, Maria Hill being gone, all these other heroes that were dusted and hope was lost, and Talos properly so decided to use the empty space on Earth to bring in half the scrolls. And so now that everyone has returned, so has the other half of Earth and the other half of the scrolls, leaving Earth overpopulated again, creating imbalance. Uh, you know, technically, Earth was never overpopulated. It's just there's so many people in so small, condensed areas. There's plenty of enough space and resources for everybody. They just have to be used properly. Um, but yes, the implications of who knows who could be a scroll. You know, anybody. Anybody at this point wins again. It's uh, it's it's a who's who of, of guessing. It's a shell game. We have no idea who could be a scroll, and that leads us with our back, our second big reveal of the episode. With Nick Fury is married to a scroll, so once again blowing the whole gate open of possibilities. You know, a lot of the promotional advertisements, if you've seen, have Nick in these scroll you know emblems overlapping and i would not be surprised if we find out that nick fury is a scroll this entire time like i said earlier anybody could be but it would just make so much sense considering all the promotional advertisement they're putting out and considering all the stuff that nick fury has done um but that's just a theory uh <clears throat> diving into this the dialogue scene between don Cheadle's roadie uh and Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury. What a scene between two legendary actors. I've been a huge fan of Don Cheadle for a while now. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he had his uh, um, Hotel Rwanda, I believe, was his big was a big hit. But Ocean's Eleven is really where I fell in love with him. He also had a little guest star role in Fresh Prince, as many other things he's done. But those are just the things that, you know, I, I found, discovered him, fell in love with his, his acting abilities. So um, that that scene way where they basically are you know they're basically going to war with words and you know he's telling nick fury you're done you're out and nick fury is like i'm never out you know even when i'm out i'm in and so but there was a, a lot of people in the comments have noticed and i picked up on it too and captain marvel nick fury's character said specifically nobody calls me nick Everybody calls me Fury. And if someone calls me Nick, they're a scroll. And we've now been revealed that when Maria Hill was talking to Fury in, in Spider-Man uh, Spider Spider Far From Home, we find out at the end that they are revealed to be scrolls, you know, confirming that theory that, you know, whoever does not call him Fury is a scroll. So now Rhodes calls him Nick in the middle of this conversation. So you know, right off the bat, that's a tell-telling that Rhodes is probably a scroll. 
And so, but a big reveal he also gave us was that him and Samuel Jackson share entra- ancestry, which means that they're related. So I wonder how that came into play. Who, how are they related? Are they, they could be cousins, they could be distant relatives, you know, they could be father and son. We have no idea what's the, what their actual relationship is. And so that's very interesting to, to reveal to us. So keep your eye out for that later down the road as well. Now, um, now, oh, another huge, huge reveal for this episode is the experimentation going on to create these super scrolls. So we found out that they have DNA from four different species. First and the you know, probably biggest is Groot. They have Groot's DNA from when he landed on Earth during Infinity Wars, you know, presence, or it could be during Endgames. But either way, they got access to some of his DNA and are now, you know, putting it into these scrolls. The second one was a frost beast. So from Thor, the dark world, we saw in the post credit, one of the dark beasts just got away. We now find out that they got access to the DNA of that frost beast. The third, call obsidian, was the hand that Wong chopped off in, in uh, pardon me, Infinity War. And then when uh, Tony's like, Wong, you're invited to my wedding. And then, you know, uh, they kick the hand, that hand, contained the DNA of Cull Obsidian, which they somehow obtained during all the, you know, snap business, and now have the DNA to, you know, import it now into this next generation of Super Scrolls. And last but not, at, not, last but not least, the Extremis um, that was created in Iron Man 3 by Aldrich Killian, or the fake Mandarin, of this fire ability of, you know, um, you know of even regeneration, increased regeneration, um, superpowers, and fire and so they have all four um and now are using them and you know i've seen the comments as well uh in the co- in, in the comics originally it was based off the fantastic four's ability and so this is as mirrored as you can get to the fantastic four since we haven't been introduced to them yet in the mcu so really looking forward to finally seeing i mean yes we've had reed richard uh, reed richards played by john krasinski in the multiverse of madness but you know, if you've seen that movie, you also know he lasts about five seconds. But he still exists in other multiverses. So looking really forward to the Fantastic Four finally coming into the MCU and interacting with all these characters as they should have been the entire time. Um, now, um, Sonia Fallsworth, uh, what a player in this game. Um, she, you know, obviously we've been built up that, uh, you know... Um, you know, Juliana Dreyfus uh, is the new, you know, Samuel Jackson's character, the new Nick Fury. Um, uh, and so, or Val, you know, her character's name. But this is another very similar character to Nick Fury. You know, her, you know, torturing this scroll, cutting off his finger, very, you know, just cut throat straightforward and asking where the escape route was. Reminded me very much of a uh, Winter Soldier scene when, the Winter Soldier is hunting down um, Nick Fury, and he ends up cutting through the floor and the ground and escaping. And so I, I see the parallels already, and I like it. I do wish that they, you know, hadn't shown her, like, walking through and struggling, you know, kind of leave a bit more mystery to her character. But overall, really enjoying what they're doing there. You know, she's kind of playing a third party right now. You know, obviously, she's not with Nick, and she's not with the Skrulls. And I do like that because, you know, life is rarely ever black and white and you're rarely going to ever have just two sides. And so having these numerous parties involved makes it feel authentic and it's just that much contextual and layered and, and just more fun to be a part of because we don't know, you know, for all we know, she could be a scroll on their side. So we, we don't know anything um, or she just obviously could just be a human that wants to get rid of all these scrolls. Either way, she's a power player. She's here and she's here to play. So, um. Yeah, overall, um, I would say that's that's everything for episode two. Looking forward to episode three. Um, my overall rating for episode two is a four point five stars. Uh, the only reason it just doesn't get a five stars is uh, just for lacking a little bit of action. That's about it. Damn near perfect score. Really looking forward to this entire series. And yeah, once again. Um, it, very, very different tone for this MCU, really bringing in this darker, you know, gritty and, you know, 
obviously having to deal with aliens, but still very toned down without these superheroes as help and backup. So, you know, we have our main character who, as we know, doesn't have any superpowers right now. Now, I'm going to dive into something just a little off tidbit here. If you do know the comics, you will, you might be aware of a storyline where uh, Nick Fury's character takes an eye from the Watcher, uh, Watu, and becomes the Unseen. And basically can see everything that happens in the multiverse. And so I don't know if they're going to go in that direction. I would love to see Samuel Jackson get some sort of cosmic powers and enter this, you know, cosmic race here and probably be inserted during Secret Wars. We don't, I don't know, we don't know, but that is a possibility as it happened in the comics before. So one's going to look out for the unseen. It is a character. Um, that is Nick Fury with the Eye of the Watcher. So, yeah. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Have a great week. Thank you.